Hi, I'm Maria Sanchez. We're broadcasting from the Reagan Library. It's Monday, November 29th, right after Thanksgiving, and we're here to greet Mr., or shall we say, Governor Mike Huckabee, the 44th Governor of Arkansas, and he is here to do a book signing, Can't Wait Till Christmas, and A Simple Christmas. A Simple Christmas has been on and off the New York Times bestseller list. It's the second New York Times bestseller book that he's written, and he's here today to sign those books and to greet some of his loyal fans and supporters and that's why we're here. We also are going to be able to have a conversation with Governor Huckabee after he signs books right here at the Reagan Library. So if you have time, there's still an opportunity for you to come and join us. Reporting live, Maria Sanchez with KADYTV.com. How are you all? Those other folks are standing outside. You're inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Ah, wow. Like a maze here. Hi. Good morning. Welcome to see you. You're the first one. My first one. Really? Are you? Bless you. Thank you very much. How long have you been waiting out here? You're kidding me. Bless you. You're special. That is amazing. Thank you very much. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you. Hi there, how are you? It's nice to see you today. Thank you. I really appreciate you saying Thanks. How are you doing, sir? Real pleasure. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Or afternoon. I get on. I've got to get my time zones all straightened out here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. I appreciate it. Somebody does some serious Christmas shopping, haven't you? Yes, sir. And a very wise selection you've made. Yeah, I think really so. You should listen to her. <laughs> and I bet you do whether you like it or not, right? Oh, I do. I can just get you to raise your head. Oh, okay. There we go. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Great guy. Well, I'm going to quote you on that because there's some folks who probably don't think that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got more. We oh, got more. Oh, right oh there. I'm oh, gone. Those are mine. Oh, okay. Well, we can sell them twice. <laughs> okay. How are you this morning? Very nice to meet you. Thank you for coming today. Have a wonderful Christmas. Hi there. How you doing? Thank you. Well, I will. That I will, I will do. Good morning. Love your cup Thank you. You know, those are appropriate, aren't they? Outstanding. Get me shot in Arkansas, but I can wear them here. Nice <laughs> job with my hair. No, she's been taking it. Oh, have you? Okay. Usually it's, it's three or four months. You haven't heard back at all. No, and we're going to be Write your name down to do this. Write your name to your hair state. If you see a guy that looks sadly... You give it to me and I'll get it to Okay, that'll be great. And some contact information. Let me see what I can do. I know a guy who knows a guy. Oh, is that right? We'll see what we can do. All right. How you doing, sir? Nice to meet you. I like that hat. Nice. Hi, Maria Sanchez here. We have Governor Mike Huckabee behind us, and we have a gentleman who walked through the line. You were one of the first. What time did you get here? Uh, I got here about 10 o'clock. Oh, so a couple <laughs> hours early. Yeah. And um, why was this important for you to come and see the governor? Well, uh, I actually, uh, my uh, getting books signed by authors is what I do. Okay. I, I probably got about 270 at this point. Oh, my. Yeah. And do you live in the area? Thousand Oaks. Okay, yeah. so a Conejo Valley resident. Right. And um, he was pretty friendly with you. Oh, absolutely. That was really neat. You want to share with well, the he, viewers? Well, he, he said, how are you? And I said, well, I'm outstanding as usual. So he said, oh, that's, my, that's the way I like to hear it. Yes, yeah. he did. <laughs> yeah. And what is your name, sir? Ed Schlossman. And Ed, did you have a happy Thanksgiving? I certainly did. We had a all family together at my older son's house. Nice. Yep. Well, Ed, thank you for your time. 
Well, thank you. We appreciate it. All right. In our coverage of Mike Huckabee's visit to the Reagan Library, signing books, and we have with us Leanne Martin and, and Emily Martin. Hello, Emily. How old is Emily? She's 19 months. Oh, is she beautiful? Mm -hmm. Just like the mom. <laughs> and you have three books that you purchased. We do. And why did you come here, and why did you buy those books? Well, we look up to Governor Huckabee, and we love his values, and we love to raise her with his values that he represents for our country. And we figured this would be a good start to Emily's Christmas book collection over the years, and to have it signed would make it special for her to remember as she grows in a great Christmas tradition in our household. And did, did he sign it to her, or he just signed his name? He just signs his name yeah. to There's everybody today. Here. Yeah, because there's a large crowd that today it's just his name. But he was very good about asking what her name was and talking about her and asking us personal personal questions. <laughs> and she's she knows the camera's on her. Can you <laughs> Emily. Say hi. You can say hi. Do you want to say hi to somebody? Can you wave to Daddy. Say hi Dada. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. The Mike Huckby book signing continues and we have with us uh, Carlotta Tarver. And Carlotta's with the Air Force, and I just overheard you say for 24 and a half years you've yes. been serving our country. Yes, I have. We are deeply indebted and grateful for all you've done. Thank you. And uh, why are you here this morning or today? Uh, I wanted to get books signed by Mike Huckabee because I think he's great. I really like watching his show and wanted to meet him and had that opportunity. Now, where are you stationed? I'm stationed at Channel Islands Air Guard Base, which is next door to Point of View Naval Base. Perfect. And so we're here all about the county. So <laughs> talk about it. We got it all wrapped up we in are. one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and um, are you planning to keep your career, obviously? For, for today, yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess that is a day-to-day -day yeah. thing. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, today, thank you for your time. Anything you'd like to add? No, but thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. The book signing with Governor Mike Huckabee continues, and we have with us... Clifford James. And Clifford, you had a little bit of a conversation with him. You want to yeah, share with I our just, viewers? I, I'm a, a composer, producer, songwriter, and um, I've been doing that for 35 years. Can't and, keep um, a job? Huh? Can't keep a job? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I had a job for 20 years working at Camarillo State Hospital right over here okay. before it went down. Anyway, um, now I just exchanged with Mike. I just I was asking him about breaking into the broadcasting market because I just finished broadcasting school because I've shifted gears out of music. I've decided to go into broadcasting because I've really educated myself about the political uh, climate. And he told me what I already knew, that I need to start in a small market and work my way up from the bottom. So I guess that's what I'll do. Well, Take consider this your ad audition. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Here you go. Cool. You're on KADYTV.com. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. We have Joel with us. Joel is part of the Mike Huckabee Christmas Tour 2010. I've got all these sleeves and everything. And Joel, what is your last name? Smallbone is and my last name. Where are you from? I'm from Sydney, Australia. And how is it that you find yourself on the Mike Huckabee Christmas Tour? That's quite a, quite a story. Um, well, my, my family and I moved to the States in the 90s, so we've, I've been here for a while. We actually moved to Nashville, Tennessee. And in Nashville, Tennessee, there's a speakers bureau called Premier Speakers. And they uh, book all the speaking engagements and also run these book tours. And I kind of got associated with them. I also do some road managing for musicians and artists and that kind of thing. So it just kind of all worked. I knew a guy. Yeah, of course, connections, right? Yeah. yeah. But you're at the right place at the right time with the right training. That's right. Now Precisely. tell me, what does this mean to your life to be on a tour like this? Um, well, we've done a, I've done a couple of tours with uh, Governor Huckabee. I've also done some just like one-off dates where we go to do banquets or book signings, just uh, he and I. And um, I think what it means to me is getting to see, we're spending two weeks on the bus together this time around, and, and you kind of get to know someone when you're in like about 45 foot by, you know, 10 foot by 10 foot box and he is the real deal he's an authentic man and he stands by his beliefs and um, is actually it's just a really good time as well so I, I suppose what I take away from it is uh, sort of level of inspiration of this is a guy that is authentic in in a in a in a world of kind of people not saying what they mean or meaning what they say
So just so our viewers know, and we're going to try to get a shot of the bus, the, the MikeHuckabee.com bus, before we finish our broadcast here, what is that like? You, do you sleep on the bus, or you, do, you just use it to travel to cities, and then you guys get into a motel, hotel? On certain tours we will. On this particular one, it's just a day bus. So we will we'll do two or three or four or five signings a day. Like For instance, yesterday we did three the day before that we did five the day before that we did four and so um, it's pretty non-stop all day to the point of you don't really have time to go to the toilet kind of thing and then we'll get to a hotel at seven or eight every night and and kind and of be exhausted be exhausted because collapse. joel prepped the crowd before governor huckabee came into the museum here to say open your book to this mm -hmm. page mm -hmm. put the flap here if you have multiples then you stack them up yeah so that's also one of your duties if well you will. It, I'm, I'm that i'm also the designated photographer i am um comic relief at points as well i am uh kind of, yeah, setting up the line. I mean, the, half the battle for this whole thing is before you arrive. So if people know what's going on in advance, that's the key. Because uh, you're dealing with hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. So. And are you an American citizen? Not quite. Okay. <laughs> I am, I am, I've got my green card, so I'm legal. Nobody worry. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank Fair you enough. for your time, Joel. Absolutely. I appreciate it. You, dear. <laughs> Not bad. We're close, man. My baby is 28 years old, so it's been a while. Things were different then. And the Josh charges ten dollars for the shot. He'll take three. Oh, Perfect. Thank you. Let's try one more. Here we go. One, two, three. And that's the one that'll be on the cover of Time magazine. Thank you, guys. And then you went into politics, which seems unlikely and improbable. How did you think that those two worlds could coexist? Well, my first career actually was in broadcasting, and I was in radio and did, did some television work, and then went into the pastorate, and then politics, and now kind of full circle back to broadcasting. So. Uh, one of these days, I'll find something I can do well. <laughs> <laughs> Politics, big, big, big steps today. You've got uh, yeah. Obama with the uh, federal pay freeze and, and deficits, lame duck Congress. Thoughts on all of that? Well, first of all, I think the uh, the pay freeze is a smart idea. It, it's not going to solve the deficit crisis, but it is a symbolic move and an important one to show that Washington is getting serious. I think uh, we've needed these kind of actions for a long time. Um, one of the things that this day ought to scare the living daylights out of us is what's going on in North Korea. This is a really uh, very tenuous situation and it's made worse by the fact that we don't really have the stick as a country anymore uh, to do a whole lot about it other than beg the Chinese to intervene. And it, it shows what happens when we um, 
don't understand that the real strength of America comes in being strong, not weak. You know, you, we look at the politics of uh, deficit spending. We also look at the unemployment uh, benefits that are, are coming up tomorrow yeah. for extension, and, and who knows? You know? Well, one of the things people need to understand, I mean, I don't know of anyone who begrudges uh, unemployment benefits, but if you continue to extend them uh, without some type of requirement, either for ongoing, uh, maybe public work, doing something to get something, if you just indefinitely extend money and payment for people to not work, what you're going to do is to create a society in which people are being paid to not work. It doesn't take long before why would anyone work when they get paid to not work? And who's going to pay for that? All the people who are left working. At, at, as Margaret Thatcher once said brilliantly, the problem with socialism is that sooner or later you run out of other people's money. And that's what we have to start worrying about. When does that happen in this country? So what should they do tomorrow? Well, what they ought to do is if they're going to pass anything that extends unemployment, which I'm not sure that beyond 91 weeks is necessary, 91 weeks, that's two years, two years. Uh, there, there's got to be some stipulation that if you're going to get a check, you show up every Monday morning at 8 o'clock and you will either pick up trash or you will uh, tutor in a school or you will uh, be a cross guard at an intersection, but you will do something from 8 in the morning till 4 or 5 that afternoon uh, like everybody else who's getting a check. And if you decide, I don't like this job, uh, as my dad always taught me, son, be grateful for the job you have. If you don't like it and can find a better one, take it. Until then, give your employer the best you got. What do you have to say to California Republicans who have a 12 percent deficit with registered voters? With a, you know, the deficit? In terms of their 12 percent, there's 12 percent less Republicans in the state of California. Um, keep talking common sense. The best way to make a Republican is let the Democrats rule without any kind of counterbalance. Uh, the one thing the Republicans don't ever want to do is to, uh, to, to act in such a way that there's no distinction between them and the Democrats. True Republicans ought to always act with a sense of fiscal responsibility with a sense of uh, commitment to the things that are about Republican. More limited government, more local government, lower taxes, not higher taxes, mothers and fathers raising kids, not uh, governments uh, raising our kids for us. Uh, that resonates with, with people, and sooner or later, I think, uh, folks come around to that. There are two things I want to ask you. One is a question my cameraman just asked me. Yeah. <laughs> is it WikiLeaks? Well, what do you think about this thing? Whoever in uh, our government leaked that information is guilty of treason. And I think anything less than execution is too kind a penalty. They have put American lives at risk. Uh, they put relationships that will take decades uh, to rebuild uh, at risk. And uh, they knew full well that they were handling sensitive documents. They were entrusted. And anyone who had access to that level of information uh, w was not only a person who understood what their rules were, but they also signed under oath a commitment that they would not violate it. They did. And I believe they, they have committed treason against this country. And any lives they endangered, they're personally responsible for, and the blood is on their hands. And in addition to, to their reckless irresponsibility and act of criminal intent, I think the New York Times has shown an utter reckless disregard for any responsible uh, journalism by printing something that they know that they obtained um, uh, in a way that is not appropriate. Will you let us know about your political aspirations? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, at this point, you know, I, I don't know what those may be. Mm -hmm. I, to be honest with you, I've not ruled out uh, another run for the presidency, and I, I will give it serious consideration and am. But it's not something that I have decided and probably won't until well into next year. But uh, the good news is I have done it before, so I know what I'd be getting into it. Mm -hmm. The bad news is I've done it before, so I know what to be getting into. But the door's still open. The door is very much open, absolutely. And and uh, but there's a lot to consider, and I know what I'd be putting myself and my family through, and and uh, Again. a lot of a lot of consideration there. It has to be interesting, though. I mean, or the last time out, I was pretty much an asterisk in the polls. Nobody knew who I was. I went out without funding. But the one thing I did learn is that uh, it's not smart to jump into a pool unless there's water in it. So, uh, you know, what i got to find out is will there be financial and organizational support that would be uh, strong enough that would give me some reason to believe that I could carry it to the finish line. A um, lot to consider. But this country's in a lot of trouble right now, too, so that's something else to think about. Last question. In terms of lifestyle, you lost 110 pounds, uh, type 2 diabetes. Mm. It's the holidays. Any yeah. advice? <laughs> 
Run. <laughs> in every way. Run from the food, run for other things. And run for office. Yeah, run for office. Yeah, that, that'll do it to you. No, that'll kill you. Um, I, I think that the most important thing is, is to enjoy things, but do it in moderation. And, uh, you know, the, the easiest thing for me, uh, sometimes it's hard for people, but I'm not as uh, addicted to sugar as I am other things. Mm -hmm. And so I, I try to leave more of the sweets alone whenever possible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, so you all for coming out. Really Thank appreciate you. your time. Finishing our broadcast at the Reagan Presidential Library with 44th Governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee. He just told us that it's still possible for him to be a candidate for the elections in 2012. And you see the tour bus behind us. It's a rigorous, grueling, arduous schedule. He was signing books of his two that he's released now. One is A Simple Christmas, which has been on and off the uh, New York Times bestseller list, which is second of seven books that he's had on the New York Times bestseller list, Do the Right Thing, being the other one released in 2008, and Can't Wait Till Christmas. So we we'll, may hear more from Governor Mike Huckabee in the months and years to come. Take care. Thank you for watching KADYTV.com.